Okay, it's Taco Tuesday. We're gonna shape this hat into a traditional taco shape. There's a couple different varieties I'm gonna show you. This video was requested in our comment section on another video. As you can tell and see, we don't do a whole lot of these, but I think a lot of people like them. And so we're gonna kind of show you how to do that. Um, after you watch this video, um, we do videos just like this. So if you want to like it and then also subscribe, you can watch many, many more videos just like this. So let's get at it. Today, um, this is just kind of maybe what I would call an out of the box style Western shape. So um, you could call it maybe a cattleman. I don't even know what you would call this, but the front is, you know, little wider than the crown's width. Um, and so you could take this hat and turn it into a taco. You could turn it into a lot of things. Um, today, we're going to focus on the taco. So the taco isn't, you know, fundamentally that much different than other shapes. You just have to be, in my opinion, a little bit more accurate. The reason why is when you have these two sides or these two corners closer together, you can see flaws and symmetry much closer together versus like a hat that I'm wearing. These corners are a foot apart one entire foot. And so your eye can't quite see some symmetry issues as much. That's part of the reason why I wear hats like that. So when you wear a taco, it's got to be right. When it's wrong, it's no good. So the first thing that I do when I'm going to taco is I decide if I want square a squared off front or if I want a rounded front. It's kind of new. It's actually not new. People are rocking it now um, where the front doesn't have kind of a defined corner of it's more of a kind of like a U shape. Um, and, but the taco principle is the same. So you got to decide what you're going to do. I see more people being more comfortable with squared off corners. So that's the way we're going to show you today. So I'm going to take these corners, flatten them out, and then I'm going to run them in. And then I'm going to show you how to get that really desired, nice symmetrical taco look to a hat. One thing about tacoing a hat, and you can see here, I'm using a really nice steamer. You can do this exact same thing at home with um, a pot on the stove. But the one thing about a taco is you kind of have to be careful about how hard you pull on your hat. So you're going to be tempted to want to get everything upright really quickly. But if you do that, you could stress your felt. So you're going to need quite a bit of heat. The one thing that I is hard for me in shaping is figuring out how much heat is going to get the felt to move properly and how little heat I can use to make sure the integrity of the sides of the walls stay the same. So if I don't use too much heat, the hat actually will kind of keep lines straighter because it's not all trying to move like a wet rag. Um, but you definitely need quite a bit of heat to get something to move. So that's just a balancing act you're going to have to learn. I think with the taco, you're going to probably use less heat than you think. Um, to get started, or sorry, at the end, at the beginning, you're not going to need much. So I'm just trying to take these original corners out. I'm putting heat right where the original sides were and a lot of heat where the corners are. You've seen in other videos where I talk about the majority of the heat going on the top of the hat. I'm going to put some on the top and end on the bottom when I'm trying to, you know, kind of erase what's in there. So we'll just keep going here. How do I know when hot is hot enough, when the felt feels pretty warm, if not hot on my hands? So if it's not there yet, you can also just kind of pull on it with your fingers to feel it get softer. Depending on the quality of your hat, it's going to get softer quicker. So don't be fooled um, if you think it takes a long time to soften your hat that you're not using the right amount of heat. You just might have a nice hat. So this is starting to get there. I'm going to set it down. And then I'm just going to push these original corners down flat. You could supersede this process. We showed a video where I ironed a brim out. Um, I kind of stray away from doing that too much. I like to not put the hat through too much, too much undue stress. So if I feel like this process is not working, I would certainly bring out an iron and get this really good. Um, but I, for the case of this video, so you can see that those corners are still showing up. I'm going to kind of move on. Typically, if I was doing this for a customer, I'd make sure it's really flat but I think I can fix that later. So to start the taco, there's, there's kind of two ways to do it. Obviously the two different shapes. You can either set your corners right away, or I kind of like this better. I try to get the side wall to be brought up before I get the corner, which you would think would be hard to find symmetry. But for me, it seems as if, if I do that, the corner will want to stay there easier. Sometimes if I put corners in the front, it's really hard to pull the sides up directly to that spot. So sometimes I just get the hat going in that general vicinity. It's kind of a function first, form second type situation. 
So I'm going to get a lot of heat really close to this junction right here next to the brim. On flatter hats, you're putting heat out here. On the taco, to get the taco look, you have to have those sides brought up. So I'm basically heating it exactly where I'm going to bend it. I'm going to go a little bit longer than I think. I'm going to stick this on my stomach. And I'm going to pick it up straight like that. And I'm going to go further than I think. And I'm just going to hold my hands clear here to the outside. And I'm really just trying to bend here. I'm not focused on this profile at all. I'll show you a way that will work on that. You'll get really bogged down if all you worry about is how square and straight that is right off the bat. It's kind of like chasing a moving target. About the time you think you have that good to go, it's going to move as soon as you touch another part of the hat. So don't get too bogged down with that. Once again, I'm heating that section right there by the brim and the crown junction, exactly where I'm trying to bend it. Heating half the hat at a time. On my stomach again, pick up. And legitimately making, if you were to just tell a kindergartner how to do a taco hat, and you say you kind of just bring the sides up like so. I'm just trying to get the hat brought up. Now, if I were to iron these sides, or spent more time there, some of that imperfection would be already gone, but I'm gonna work on that as we go. So that's kind of the start. Just get the hat wanting to come up. This is when it's pretty critical to only put heat on the top side of your hat, because that's gonna make the felt want to wilt up instead of wilt down. I've talked about that in a few other videos. So this is another time to do that. So you could do this just a few times to where you feel like the hat is wanting to wilt upward. So once again, do that. And sometimes I'll pull down just a little bit with my four fingers just to really put that line in there. But you don't have to overdo it too much. Let the heat help you. So once we get it to this stage, I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Okay, once I have what I feel like is the general tacoing of the hat, I'm going to try to flatten or square the sides before I ever put a corner. For the most part, in a lot of hat shaping circles, you really don't want to put the hat flat down for really any reason. If you've watched my channel at all, you watch me do that all the time. There's sometimes where it's warranted and sometimes when it's not. Utilizing things around you to get symmetry and perfection is, is important, but you don't want to hurt a hat. This will hurt a hat if you push on it too much. So I'm going to take this, put it flat on the table, and the hard part here is this is kind of a blind shape. So I have no idea how far over I'm going. Is it going to be correct or not? And that's where that's kind of dangerous. But what I'm going to do is set it flat on there. And you can do this with either hand. And I'm just going to work my hand and try to use the flatness of this table to flatten the side wall of this taco. Now, this is a circle being shaped by a flat surface. At some point in time, it is going to make like an actual board shape but then it will start to curve. And you're never gonna be able to find that perfect line and you will sit here for days trying to do that. So just try to get part of the hat square and then you can move back or just get it correct and then you can use your hands to fix that. So usually I focus on the front third. So I would call this the front third right here. I'm not gonna to try to keep it, get it upright back here just yet. I might do that at the end if I'm not getting enough upright. But if you try to put the whole side down and flatten it, you're going to honestly do it incorrectly. So I'm going to set it down, run my hand, and try to, I'm mostly working on this very outside edge of the brim, trying to get it to stay. This exact same thing would and could work if you ironed it. So just as an example, you can see what that side is looking like versus this side that I just folded over. So I'm gonna do the same process. About the time you do one thing to one side, you need to go to the other in order to keep things at least, you know, relatively symmetrical. I'm putting quite a bit of heat in that same section now because I was pushing out here. I might put some more heat out on the outside of that brim. You can supersede this by number one, shaping a taco from the very first time you have the hat. You don't have to really undo as much. So set it down, take your opposite hand, just work that down as if your hand is the iron. You can go slow if you need to. Pressure and heat, the way you get this to work. I'm just working the front bit of this hat. You'll notice I have not done anything remotely close to do, putting corners in the front. So if you're watching this and wondering how on earth I'm going to get this symmetrical at the end, 
you'll see that all of this work that I'm doing on both sides will make that almost automatic. Okay, setting it down again, pushing straight down, trying to bend it where I was without the board or without the, the table. I'm just working on that outside edge, maybe a little bit of that sidewall. And I feel like with tacos, once you kind of get them there, they kind of stay. But sometimes I feel like it takes a while to get them there. And by a while, I mean I might get this shaped now and then have to come back, you know, for a couple days and, you know, iron out a little spot here, a little spot there. And it probably has nothing to do with it actually being, you know, not a sustainable shape. It's just you see all of the imperfections because they're standing right next to each other. And you can, you can be really critical with a taco. And as I said at the beginning of the video, that's why I don't rock a taco. I probably should rock a taco where we are, given the wind. It might cut through the wind a little bit better. I just choose to use a short brim when the weather gets like that. Okay, I'm just going to get this a little closer and kind of show you what it should look like before you start to you know screw it down a little bit and make it be super accurate i learned to shape a taco from a guy that was raised in kansas and i thought i knew what a taco was and he taught me that a taco isn't just close and together it's 90 degrees not not nearly what i thought i was doing that'll teach you so let me just show you I'm gonna get this corner a little bit more over so you can see. And then we're gonna make this thing hopefully pass the mustard down south. Not just kind of make it look close, but make it look awesome. So before I get really critical at all with corners or symmetry, you can see that these you know pseudo corners or rounded edges are about the same width as the the um crown. Okay, so that's kind of where those are at. Let's flip it around and look at that symmetry. Now the front, I can see all kinds of waffling in the, you know, the side walls and, you know, that could have probably been fixed if I would have ironed it. So like, just go back there and see that. Black hats are kind of fun and sneaky. They don't have to be perfect to look close to perfect. So now I'm going to get picky. This back is not too bad. And I'll talk about kind of a couple of choices you have with the back in the taco, but I'm going to make these side walls correct and then stand them up even more. So before I do that, I'm going to decide you know, what my corners are. So you can look down your hat and look at the, at the um, crown. I can't find crown today in my vocabulary, apparently. And just put your thumbs exactly where that's at and then start your corners there. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to set that one, put my fingers on it. I'm going to heat it right there. Because I did all of that work bringing the sides up, it makes lining all of this up so 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 much easier so i've marked that now i'm going to put my middle finger there and just hold that i can take my pointer finger and my thumb and pinch it i'm just trying to set that in there a little bit you could put this down hold your thumb and do the same thing I'm legitimately trying to make a crease right there the other reason why i shy away from tacos sometimes is if you don't get this right I'm not saying it's permanent where you put this crease, but because you're using so much force, it kind of becomes mildly permanent. You can always iron it out, especially if it doesn't stay in there too long. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison. Stand that bad boy up, not stood, it up, stood up at all. So I'll go over there and do that. These are, when, when you have a cool taco, they're just about as cool as any other shape, if not cooler. I think that's a true measure of a good shaper if they can give you an adequate representation of a of a taco okay so you can see this one here i didn't look down the middle i looked down on the top so i'm gonna do that again and that looks really good okay so i'm gonna try to put that in there a brand new hat you're gonna do a lot less of this kind of work in here work in there because this sidewall is going to be accurate from the start so once I think I have those corners pretty well squared off, I'm going to work this part of the hat as much as I need to to get it, you know, at least, you know, accurate. Okay, so this side is still kind of doing all sorts of stuff. So I might go back down and use this to do that. Usually you can't shape something as straight as a straight line will. 
So I'm going to put heat on the outside. I'm going to put heat on the inside. Once this starts to square up, you can utilize using less heat in order to let the sides, you know, stay nice and true. If I were to heat this hat a bunch and pull on it, it's going to make the whole hat move. And I'm just trying to work on this front little section that keeps kind of moving around that I, in a way that I don't like. Okay, so once I think I have the front pretty good, my band's trying to quit. You can look down that. Now I'm going to go to the back and see what all that madness did there. And I can use the same philosophy of putting it down flat or putting it on my stomach and pulling. I'm going to use my stomach more because this is where we start to transition straight, super straight lines into a rounded edge. And so if you try to do too straight, you'll end up having to put corners in some fashion in the back of your hat, which is kind of bizarre. So in theory, if I were to go straight back, I would have to put a corner back here. That's usually not the style. So I'm going to hold it on my stomach, run my fingers down where that crease is at, and just try to send it. Put it all the way up there. Okay, look at the difference this side versus this side. So especially when you go to the back, you're not going to spend two to three minutes per side. You're going to spend about 20 seconds per side, whether you're heating or shaping. Okay, same thing here. I'm not even going to look to see what the symmetry is. I'm just going to put it on my stomach. Usually with tacos, you're working them to a V in the back. So it's a straight across 90, 90, a goalpost in the front, and then the back, it's some version and intensity of a V. So you can put it down on the table and work it like that so you know your hands are going even. You can put your hand in the middle. The guy that I shape for, he liked this to be about like that. Which you may look at if you're not from somewhere where you see tacos and think that's pretty aggressive, but that's pretty industry standard. So I'm going to call that symmetrical-ish, enough-ish. Come back to the front, and you just kind of teeter-totter back and forth until you realize if I do this to the front, it messes up the back. If I do this to the back, it messes up the front, and you're going to have to settle somewhere in there. I don't know how many times I'm going to tell you in this video reason why I don't do tacos is I'm too picky. I see all those things and when they're standing next to each other, I can't ignore them. You got to embrace it if you're going to wear a taco. So I'll get it just a little bit closer and then I'll talk about that other front. I'm not going to do it to this hat, but I'll kind of explain how you would do it differently. So this is where you can massage these sides down, push them over to make that 90 degree look a little bit more stark. Jeepers, that's looking good. Now, for the sake of this video, I don't take my hats off much because it's scary what's going on underneath. But I'm going to show you what the difference is when you see this versus this on someone's head. You ready? Epic, right? It's not me. But these are awesome. Super awesome. You'll also find that typically when someone's rocking a, a true straight taco, they're probably not going to have a four and a half inch brim, this, this bigger brim, because whatever you do um, on the extreme, so if you do a flatter look and you have a big brim, it's gonna look bigger. If you have a more straight up and down look with more brim, it's gonna look even more straight up and down. So you usually see, you know, those standard old four inch brims or four and a quarter, you know, standards that are now um, like this. And you can see all kinds of different crowns that people put in here, but that's kind of how you do a general taco. So utilize, Getting the hat close on your stomach, you know, pulling these sides in. Don't set those corners if you can until the very end because it's going to get way easier. Okay. The part that I did not put in here, and you don't see a ton with tacos because you don't have a whole lot of brim left to do that, is a ton of downward dip. Okay. You don't see, you know, like a break over. You see like a natural, you know, a movement of the hat. I'm just going to show you if you did want to break this hat over, what it would do to your sides. I just want you to see that. So when you do that, it's going to make this more dramatic it's going to make this almost look like this, which if that's the look that you're going for, usually you see people stick pretty square to 90. That's what they're going for. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm, I'm actually not going to do it to this hat. You don't need to see that, but you can see this has kind of a natural dip to the front. You definitely do not want dip to the back like that. That's not what you're going for. You want it kind of straight off the back. So that other front that I talked about, you would do a similar process, just do not put the 90 degree corners in the hat. 
One thing that I see a little bit different is those folks who do that kind of stray away from a true, what I would call taco taco look. They kind of have this out just a little bit more. So in my opinion, I wouldn't call those tacos. There's probably a real name for that style of hat. This to me is a taco. So if you're Googling how to shape a taco, hopefully you found this video. If not, and you have a friend that wants a taco, you can do it. If you're a closet taco wearer, hopefully I showed you today how to do it correctly, how to make it nice and symmetrical. That's the taco.